Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today we're going to learn about the Ben Gibbard Signature Mustang. If you're not familiar with Ben Gibbard, he is with the band Death Cab for Cutie. Just a fun fact, he's actually not only the founding member, but the only original member. His first album, it was actually all him. He played all the instruments, did all the singing and whatnot. And then the rest of the band just kind of formed together afterwards. So needless to say, he's a pretty talented musician, whether you like his music or not. But he's mainly known for using 70s modified Mustangs. So recently, Fender teamed up with him to do a signature Made in Mexico Mustang that has some really interesting specs. So I'm reviewing this more so as a guitar fanatic, but he sure did know how to design a really cool Mustang here. So let's go ahead and get this out and take a peek at this thing. So first off, you're going to notice, since he likes the 70s ones, he went for a more 70s style. You got the giant big old headstock, but you get a very classic natural finish with an ash body. Oh wow, look at that. That's looking good. I think that's one of my favorite things about this whole series is just how good the bodies look. They always make sure that they have lots of wood grain going on, and this has that in spades. So. First thing you're going to notice if you're familiar with Mustangs, if not, you can check out my Spider-Man Mustang video to learn a little bit more about them. But normally, to select pickups on a Mustang, you got these little switchies over here. And that always seemed like a bad location, like you would hit them when you're strumming. Now, of course, you get used to it the more you play one, but he's actually completely modified this one to not have those. So you're probably curious, uh, how do you swap the pickups? Because you don't have enough volume controls and a tone control to have like a J bass style where you just roll off the volume of each one. He actually omitted the tone pot. Despite it still saying tone, this is now a rotary switch. So this selects your pickups. And if you get confused by that, I'm sure you could replace that with like a chicken head style switch, but he wanted to maintain the original look of a Mustang, except for this part that he apparently didn't like. On top of that, he had Fender make him his own custom pickups in this one. So they're vintage voiced specifically for Ben Gibbard sound. So if you're trying to replicate what he's doing, these should get you close. We'll have to test that. But in theory, that's what they were going for. But to make things even better, I talked about the wood grain, but my initial love for this model actually stemmed from the fact that it's chambered. <laughs> At that point in time, that was like brand new to me. Now we did review the Kenny Wayne Shepard signature Stratocaster that also had the chambered out wings. So we'll have to see if we can open this up to actually see the chambering or not. But this is a really lightweight guitar, but it's not too lightweight. I don't think we've gotten to the point where it's gonna start neck diving on us. It's comfortable, but then again, Mustangs, I don't think they're super heavy, but if he's coming from a 70s era one, I can understand why he might have wanted it chambered. And the other thing here is this looks just like a vintage Mustang. It even says dynamic vibrato. This does not have a vibrato. It just looks like it. It's actually a custom hardtail setup. So first impressions here, made in Mexico, $10.99.99. Kind of expensive for what you're getting here, but there is a lot of custom attributes and it is an artist signature guitar. So I mean, I guess it makes sense. You're either gonna like this thing or you're not but it is a complete gloss finish. So it's a glossy neck, even the glossy fretboard. And it also comes with a gig bag. So no hard shell case or anything like that. As far as case candy, do we get anything special? Doesn't look like it. Just your regular fender stuff with a truss rod tool. So to learn a little bit more about the Ben Gibbard Mustang, let's go ahead, and throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs. inside the Ben Gibbard Mustang. Let's go ahead and take a look at these pickups. Is it anything special under here? Eh, not necessarily. You've got your identifying barcode. Here's what your neck pickup looks like. And your bridge pickup. Looks like they each have BB written on them. All lowercase for neck and capital lowercase for bridge. I was really hoping that we'd be able to see the body chambers, but once again, it looks like it's hidden within this because this is a three piece ash body. They matched it up pretty good, so you don't necessarily see it on the top. But along the edges, there's a very clear seam line right here. 
and one right here. So likely how they do that chambering is they just chamber out the side of it and then they glue it all together. So we probably have some sort of a chamber right here. It doesn't sound like they chambered out the middle, but you definitely have like a small chambering in like these areas would be my best guess. But you definitely can't see those chambers just by removing the plastics. But here's what the cavities themselves look like. They've been shielded off, they're nice and clean, but if you wanted to modify it for a different type of pickup, you're kind of limited to a single coil unless you're routed even more. Well, let's take a look at our controls. This is indeed a master volume as it says, but again, there is no tone control on this guitar at all. This is your pickup selector. It's just a three-way rotary switch. It clicks into place. So what does that look like under here? It's got some sort of a stack system. I don't know a lot about electronics, but I'll let you guys take a look at that. It seems pretty complicated just to put a rotary switch in the guitar. But our volume pot is 250K, and your output jack is still located on the front plate. And due to the size of the rotary switch, you can see they had to route just a hair more out of the guitar right here. As far as our pickup readings go, our bridge is 5.14k ohms. Our neck position is about the same, a little hotter, 5.3. And then the middle position should be about half that, 2.63. And now onto what could be considered the biggest false advertising Fender has ever done. <laughs> That's a dramatic way to put it. But it says right here on this thing, dynamic vibrato. If I went to a store and it said dynamic vibrato on it and I brought it home and I find out that this thing does not have a dynamic vibrato, I would be kind of upset. I'm surprised they didn't modify that because unless you have a spec sheet on you, you might just think that the trim bar is in the case and just not even realize that that's not there. I guess if you never even plugged it in and just picked it up blindly, you might think it also has a tone control. Uh, now nah, I'm just being funny with that. I, I, they definitely advertised it properly. I think it would have been cool if they would have modified the word dynamic for like dead vibrato or something like that. Like you maybe could convert this to actually work. They just don't give you a bar in the case, but you could put a bar in there. You just tighten it down with this little screw right there. But when you flip over to the backside, the only thing that this thing is missing are the springs on the backside. So I'll cut to this one for my Spider-Man Mustang. You see those springs right here? This one does not have that. They've just decided to cap them off right here. But it looks like you might be able to remove those if you want to. But they don't provide those parts for you, so I'm not sure how difficult that would be to get those. Might actually just be easier to buy a separate tremolo that's already set up like that. Since you've got the routes, you can technically do that if you're really sad that you don't have a trim. But I wonder if they decided to continue to do that to kind of help with the whole chambering and getting the weight down. I bet that's probably why they did it. And that way they don't actually have to modify their CNC machines. It's just doing all the same stuff. But stock from the factory, this is what you got. It's just a hardtail version. This does not move at all. And the bridge is just the regular one here we can move on to our maple neck here from the ash body. This is a complete maple neck. They use a skunk stripe on the back, so it's not like a maple fretboard neck combination. But the biggest difference between this one and a vintage Mustang is they utilize the truss rod at the top of the neck instead of at the base of the heel. But since this is a Mexican made one, it's got the black plastic at the top. And it looks like uh, something went on there at the factory, like it got scratched up, chipped, I'm not sure. That's just not as clean as it normally is. Maybe it's just an unfortunate mineral streak that makes it look strange, I'm not sure. But that's like the only defect I see on this guitar so far. But we've got 22 medium jumbo frets on this one and it is a reduced scale length short scale guitar as most Mustangs are. It's supposed to be 24 inches, which my measurements also confirm that. And let's check out that nine and a half inch radius. Yep, that seems to be accurate to me. And we have a synthetic bone nut that measures 1.64 inches on mine, 2.01 by the 12th, with the first fret neck depth of 0.92, and wow, 0.93 by the 12th. Here's what the modern C-shaped neck looks like, first fret and 12th fret. So it starts off kind of thin and rounded, but then it really widens up towards that 12th. Then besides the truss rod difference here, we've got the string trees, Fender Mustang logo with the vintage style tuners that we'll take a look at on the back. This is one of those guitars where if you like natural wood crane and natural wood colors, I think you're gonna like it. Especially if you don't like tremolos. All right, let's go ahead and swap over to the back side here. Nothing much to really talk about. You get a little bit of a cutaway right here, but the rest is just regular Mustang. Except for the strap buttons. This actually comes stock from the factory 
with Schaller's, which is my favorite brand of locking straps. Four bolt on neck, just like normal, has the Fender F logo on the plate. And once again, this is all a gloss finish on here. So thick finishes if you like that. And on the back side of the headstock, we get the cool F stamped logo tuners. And you also get his name on the back side of the guitar, Ben Gibbard. Now it's not an actual signature. It's just, you know, like the serial number. They just put a decal on it. But the serial number dates this one to 2020 and it's made in Mexico. The only thing left for us to capture here would be the weight after we take a look at the edges. So far, the QC on this one seems pretty good. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. The frets aren't super sharp or anything. Cool wood grain. Everything was installed great. I didn't notice any completely stripped out screw holes. Pretty much the only thing we can knock them for is this weird area and that might not necessarily be their fault. It's kind of hard to tell. It could just be a like a wood grain pattern or something. But this chambered one weighs seven pounds, about one ounce. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this thing sounds. <laughs> How do I feel about the clean tones? It's not bad, but the pickups just seem really weak on this thing. So I guess keep that in mind if you do purchase one of these, you're probably going to want to turn your amp up more so than on your other guitars. But so far, I'm not a big fan of this switching system either. So this one, when you turn the knob all the way to the right, you put it all the way basically on 10. What do you think that would normally be? In my eyes, I think it's the same thing as flipping your switch down, going to your bridge. No, you're going to your neck. And then turning it all the way towards this way goes to your bridge. And obviously in the middle, you know where you are there. The way I remember it, looking down, you guys can't see this, but you see six showing, seven and eight. So I think the fullness sounding of the pickup. Number eight is bigger, so you're going to be on the neck because it's fuller. Six is a little bit thinner, so you must be on your bridge. But now let's go ahead and switch over to some distortion.
definitely comes to life a little bit more once you add some distortion. And I know Ben's playing really has a lot of effects over top of it, and I think that's where this guitar really would excel. <laughs> Now that we know all about the Ben Gibbard signature Mustang, what are my favorite attributes of this guitar? I love the way it looks, and I love the fact that he, you know, changed it up a little bit, gave us a hardtail version, swapped up the pickup system, and made it this beautiful natural color with great wood grain. I like that he chambered it and all that. It's a really cool guitar, but I, I, I just didn't like it that much. This is a really stiff feeling guitar. So if you like doing like power chords and stuff, this will be a great guitar for that. So maybe it's the short scale that's kind of throwing me off on this one. Maybe it's the switching system. I like the idea of it, but in practice, it's the opposite that I imagined it anyways. I mean, you get used to it. But overall, this just wasn't the guitar for me. But I think if you're somebody who likes to have a bunch of different pedals and effects to get, you know, similar tones to Ben, I think you're gonna like this. Just personally, I don't listen to Death Cab for Cutie, so I don't really have that, oh, it's a signature guitar effect for this one. But that said, I think this would make a great collection piece because it has so many interesting, unique specs to it. So, Droglodytes, I hope you enjoyed learning about the Ben Gibbard signature Mustang today. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.